Thank you so much for watching Landom Sea Goes There. Please subscribe and hit the like button and the bell notification button. No Mercy is a 1986 American crime thriller film that stars Richard Gere and Kim Basinger. The storyline goes that maverick Chicago cop Eddie Gillette poses as a hitman to meet with somebody who's in from New Orleans looking to have a job done. The result is that both the guy and Gillette's partner wind up dead, while a stunning blonde in on the setup disappears. He heads south to settle the score and soon finds himself being hunted with the girl in tow, and the local police not happy about him being down there at all. New Orleans seems like it will never be the same. The star Richard Gere and the director Richard Pierce went to work with the screenwriter on the creation of the shooting script. Gere went on to make a lot of suggestions about both his character Gillette and the general tone of the movie. It said that Gere was continually at work from the moment that he decided to make this movie, and he was intense about it, that he had a passionate respect for every part of the filmmaking process, and he participated in as much of it as an equal partner and not the star of the film. He stated that he was one of the hardest working actors that he had worked with. When the director traveled to Chicago to make final decisions about the filming locations that were there, Gear went along with him, familiarizing himself with his character by spending many hours riding with Chicago undercover cops. In his sometimes frightening visits to the city's most violent neighborhoods, Gear was grateful for any stray moment of humor that would present itself. At one point, two suspects were arrested, and they recognized Gear, who had in 1980 appeared in American Gigolo. The two suspects argued back and forth with each other. They said, it's Gigolo, it's Gigolo. One would say, no, it's not. The other would say, yes, it is. They did this all the way to the paddy wagon that they were put in. In North Carolina, the production company alternated between practical locations and the studio backlot. As they shot the continuation of what the director calls Eddie Gillette's progression from the objective world to the subjective one, the film locates this world in the community across the river from New Orleans called Algiers. He said that the Algiers in the film is a mythical underworld and that it wasn't a realistic representation of the Cajun culture of the bayous. Chicago filming locations included a dingy diner beneath the tracks of the L train to an elegant restaurant in Old Town to also Chicago Area 3 Detective Division Police Station, where the crucial interrogation scene was shot. The city's famous and long since vanished stockyards were designed and constructed from scratch along a deserted railroad crossing, and 30 head of cattle were shipped in for the scene that was shot there. The car wash at the beginning of the movie still exists and is now a mobile service station on Elliston Avenue in Chicago. For the Louisiana leg of the shooting, which involved scenes in the View Carre police station, the production designer said that they converted a tourist information society building that had wonderful murals of old New Orleans into their police station. The funny thing about all this is that the building was due to be converted into a real police station, and the police department asked the production company to leave some of the counters and fixtures that they used for the film. When a leading lady was on the director and producer's casting agenda, the producer thought that this role needed to be a totally modern equivalent of the great 1940s star in her most famous role 
in Gilda, and that actress was Rita Hayworth. Maybe he felt this way because the character of Michelle Duvall does a torrid dance at the Blue Parrot Club in the film. They felt that Kim Basinger was the only actress who they thought could generate that kind of excitement that Rita Hayworth did and who could also meet the other demands of this part. You see, the part of Michelle is a wonderful blending of innocence and experience. Someone who has never been outside the control of a man and is barely able to write her name or make a choice for herself. She's a pure creature of instinct in a world of sexual and emotional violence that's almost unimaginable to most of us. They felt that Basinger had a kind of feral, intuitive intelligence that was just right for the part of Michelle. The movie is the first of two cinema movie collaborations of actor Richard Gere and actress Kim Basinger. This film and then final analysis from 1992. And it's one of a handful of films that Richard Gere made during his male sex symbol period between the late 1970s and the mid-1980s. He was in Breathless from 1983, this film in 1986, American Gigolo from 1980, Beyond the Limit in 1983, and Looking for Mr. Goodbar from 1977. As told in his memoir, Kim Basinger's then-husband, Ron Snyder, found two love letters that were penned by Richard Gere, stashed in a drawer in Basinger's home gym. He found this at the end of April in 1986. He then made the decision to follow his wife on one of her late-night shoots with Gere. He tracked the cheating superstars to a restaurant, and he watched them passionately making out in the parking lot in Gear's limo. He later confronted her about this, and the marriage did end up surviving this affair, until Basinger started another romance on the set of Batman in 1989. The movie received really poor reviews from critics when it was released. And it's not a great film by any means, but it's still a pretty fun watch. So take a look at it. It's well worth the time. Thank you so much for watching, and we'll continue to chase the classics.